This video shows an iris sutured poster chamber intraocular lens technique by Gregory Ogawa, who has no relevant financial interests. The patient experienced right eye monocular diplopia from a subluxated one piece piggyback IOL. There was good capsule support for the piggyback, making this a suitable situation for iris fixation. In most instances, it is relatively easy to bring the optic anterior to the iris. Here we see the edge of the optic on the right moved in front of the iris. However, since this is a negative power, fairly rigid, one-piece PMMA IOL, it is not possible to get both sides of the optic positioned anteriorly. Some additional OVD is injected between the IOLs to help elevate the piggyback. One haptic is hooked from below with a straight Ogawa Mini IOL manipulator to elevate the optic above the iris plane. Then an angled version of the manipulator is used to rotate the IOL to move the haptic into the anterior chamber. The same pair of maneuvers is performed for the other haptic to bring it into the anterior chamber as well. A long curved trans chamber needle, CTC6L, is then passed through the limbus under the optic and then partially out through the limbus on the other side of the eye. With the optic held anteriorly by the trans chamber needle, one haptic is tucked back behind the iris. Often the needle can be used to hold the optic anteriorly during the procedure, but with this stiff IOL, the needle is pulled through so that there is just tenopolypropylene suture behind the optic before I place the second haptic behind the iris with an angled manipulator. With the suture in place, it is possible to lift and maintain the optic anterior to the iris while acetylcholine is injected into the anterior chamber to constrict the pupil and achieve anterior capture of the optic by the pupil. Here, the iris is massaged centrally to better access the more peripheral part of the iris prior to placing the fixation suture. The CTC6L needle on tenopolypropylene passes down through iris and under the haptic. The IOL manipulator pushes down on the iris while the needle tip comes up through the iris and then out through the adjacent limbus. The straight IOL manipulator supports the optic while the second needle is passed down through the iris, under the other haptic, then up through the iris and out through the limbus. I use the IOL manipulator to push the optic behind the iris while the iris fixation sutures are under the haptics but not yet tied. The iris is retracted to inspect the IOL to ensure good centration of the optic. The straight IOL manipulator is used to hook one side of the suture between the iris and the cornea, then to retract it through a convenient paracentesis opening. Tying forceps help to fully externalize the suture arm. The other side of the suture is also hooked between the cornea and iris to externalize it through the same paracentesis opening. The suture ends are tied together starting with a two-wrap throw that is brought down to the outside of the paracentesis. Both suture arms are held by one tying forcep with one suture loop created longer than the other. The IOL manipulator knob catches the longer loop of the suture to take it into the eye and pass the desired knot location to tighten the throw. The microscope has been rotated to make it easier to retrieve the first suture arm of the second haptic out through a different paracentesis and then retrieve the second arm in the same fashion. The two-wrap throw is created and the throw is tightened to the outside of the paracentesis with the formation of a longer loop as both arms are held by one tying forcep. The throw is cinched inside the eye as was done for the first haptic. With the microscope back to the original position, 
The second throw is cinched down on the first haptic. A single wrap throw is created and tightened to the paracentesis with formation of a longer loop as both arms are held with one forceps prior to tightening this final throw to secure the first haptic. Since a 23 gauge scissor was not available for this case, the paracentesis opening is enlarged slightly to accommodate a 20 gauge coaxial scissor for cutting the suture arms. The microscope is rotated again for work on the second haptic as a single wrap throw is created and then pulled into the eye with the IOL manipulator. The manipulator is repositioned to the other paracentesis to optimize tightening of the throw in this particular location. The third and final throw for the second haptic is taken inside the eye with the final cinching of the throw again via the other paracentesis opening. The arms of the suture for the second haptic are cut in the same fashion. A 20 gauge Ogawan fusion cannula is placed through the larger paracentesis while an Ogawa cortex aspirator is used to remove the OVD from the eye. A 23 gauge of a tractor is used to create two superior peripheral iridectomies to prevent conventional and reverse pupillary block. The infusion cannula is removed, then some stromal hydration is performed to ensure sealing of the paracentesis prior to completion of the case.